Morning, everybody. We're going to start a new book today, so it's an exciting day. Welcome. Not sure why my face looks so orange on the camera today. Just go with it. So, good morning. Good morning. Um, as you jump on and join us, you can share this. Helps people know what's going on. We invite you to do that. And as you jump on, you can answer this question. If you could be guaranteed one thing in life, if you could be guaranteed one thing in life, what would it be? And you can't use two answers. You can't say salvation. You can't give the Jesus answer, okay, because we have salvation through Jesus and through what Jesus accomplished on the cross. When Jesus said, to tell us die, it is finished, it meant it is done, it is finished. And so we have that through Christ. You can't say that salvation, you can't say money. But if you could be guaranteed one thing in life, what would it be? Jake says happiness. And we have a guarantee of joy through Jesus. Good morning. What else? If you could be guaranteed one thing in life. Wisdom. Okay. Nice. Wisdom. We find that in Jesus, right? Proverbs tells us he's the fulfillment of wisdom. Your son's happiness. That's cool, Jim. Health. And Karen, that's what I would have said too. Health. Yep, peace. That's a good one peace. I would say health um, for you know myself, my family, obviously for everyone, but health is something that is, is hard to come by sometimes. A deer every year, Mike says, <laughs> for bow hunting, huh? Contentment. Yeah, sometimes that's hard to find. Always have contentment. It'd be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? If you could be guaranteed one thing in life, what would it be? Rosemary says health too. Yep, healthy. So, keep joining, keep sharing, and we're gonna get started. We start a new book today. So, again, it says Pastor Mike is dreaming for a deer every year. That's great. Uh, we just came out of Acts. Pastor Mike finished Acts yesterday for us. And we're going to jump past Acts a few books ahead in the New Testament. We're going to stay in the New Testament. So we're going to go past Romans, past First and Second Corinthians, past Galatians, past Ephesians, and open up to Philippians. So if you could open up to Philippians today, if you want to follow along. Philippians is... Not a big book, so we won't be here uh, forever. It's four chapters, four relatively brief chapters, okay? And we're going to just look at a small chunk this morning, but a little bit of background on Philippians. Uh, the author is Paul. So we just spent a lot of time talking about Paul and the, the journey of, of Paul. And now we're seeing Paul's what this really is in Philippians is a thank you letter. It's a missionary thank you letter. It's a thank you letter to the church in Philippi for their support, for the relationship that he has with them. And we'll look more at that. So Philippi was a Roman colony and it was a center for trade. And even though it was a Roman colony, it was these citizens got treated like Roman citizens. They got all those benefits. Okay, it was a pretty good place to be. And you can find the story of the start of the church in Philippi in Acts 16. If you remember, there's a lady named Lydia who supported Paul on his journey, and she's the, the first convert in that region. And the church, the early church in Philippi, met in Lydia's home. So that's a, a pretty cool little tidbit of information about Lydia. She's a very important lady in Scripture. And the Philippian Christians more than once sent their financial support to Paul when he was in Thessalonica. So he's very thankful for that. But they support him not just uh, with finances, but with prayer. And you see Paul writing this missionary thank you letter to the church in Philippi. And it's not just a thank you letter. As with Paul's letters, he offers corrections. He offers uh, spiritual guidance. So here we go. Verse 1, the book of Philippians. It starts with a greeting. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, 
with the overseers and the deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, there's a little greeting. You've heard that probably in sermons before. People, preachers using that, that greeting that Paul uses. Okay, it's a pretty famous greeting. Verse 3. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. You really get a sense of Paul's gratitude here, right? And the joy that he has for this church. And it's, he's thankful for a lot of things. He's thankful for the fruit that he sees, that this church has grown and the things that they're doing. He's thankful for the way they've supported him. And he's thankful for the bond that he has with them. You can tell he has quite a bond with this church in Philippi. Now, verse 6. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. So God's work for us began when Jesus died in our place. And his work in us is through the Holy Spirit. And that starts when we believe. And that process doesn't stop, does it? It's a, it's a growing process every day. And it comes to completion the day that Jesus returns and we're made new once and for all. All right, we're going to come back to that in a little bit. Look at verse 7. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Right? They've supported Paul through all of his ups and downs. For God is my witness how I yearn for you all with affection of Christ Jesus, and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So, let's go back to this idea in verse 6. Where Paul says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. When you think about completion, and you think about growth and, and getting closer to that completion, do you sometimes feel like you're not making progress in your spiritual life? I think as, as Christians, if we take Christianity seriously, a lot of us have felt that way at some point, that we're just stuck and we're not making spiritual progress and we have to figure out how to get out of that rut. Right? So as Paul reminds the Philippians, when God starts a project, he completes it. When God starts a project, he completes it. Okay, He's not that guy who's going to tinker with seven different projects at once and go back and forth between them, but never really finish a project. Okay, he, You know that guy probably, but God's not that guy. Okay, when God says he's going to finish something, he does. He completes it. Okay, so be encouraged that God won't give up on you. Okay, God's not going to give up on you. But your path to completion is not going to look like this. Be nice if it did, right? Be nice if it was that smooth. But your path to completion is going to look a lot more like this. Okay, you might even go backwards sometimes. It's going to be a jagged line. It's going to get from here to here. But it's going to sometimes look a little ugly in between. And that's for a number of reasons. Because A, we're not perfect. We sin. We mess up. We learn from those mistakes and we get further because of it. God uses that. Okay, But on, on the other hand, the world is broken as well. Okay, So we're going to experience all kinds of ups and downs. But God uses that brokenness. He turns it into something beautiful. Okay, And He's going to bring it to completion when He returns and when He makes all things new. Now, when you feel incomplete, okay, when you feel unfinished, when you feel distressed, remember God's promise. Remember His promise to the Philippians. Remember what Paul reminds them of. Okay, remember His promise. Remember the way He provides. It's not us bringing it to completion. What does it say? It says He's going to bring it to completion. That's a promise of God, and that's, that's the way He's going to work in our life. And so when we're feeling incomplete, when we're feeling distressed, unfinished, trust that process, trust that promise, and don't let that present feeling, don't let that present condition rob you of the joy of knowing Jesus in the moment and continuing to grow closer to Him. So I'm excited to continue to go through this book of Philippians with you. We'll continue with it tomorrow, but first, let's pray. 
Lord, we thank you for this opportunity this morning to gather together and just soak in your word. And Lord, I just pray that as we soak in your word every day, it transforms us as we trust you to do a good work in us and bring it to completion. And Lord, give us encouragement in that process through the power of your Holy Spirit. As we yearn for that day, Lord, with no more sin, no more pain, but just seeing you, our Lord and Savior, face to face. And until then, help us to fight the good fight, help us to run the race, and let our light shine for others. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll be live again tomorrow morning. So God's blessings, and we'll see you soon.